everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and my craft table. So today I am super excited because I have a brand new machine to unbox, my Spellbinder 6. And in honor of opening that with the first time with you on camera, we're also gonna be making a Mother's Day card. This is an amazing, beautiful die from Simon Says Stamp. And we're gonna be making a couple of Mother's Day cards with this. So without further ado, Grab yourself some coffee, sit back, relax, and let's go and enjoy the project. So today is the day. We are making a Mother's Day card with my brand new machine that I, I did not purchase it specifically for this card, but I'm so excited. I now um, have a, a way to unbox it and put it to good use. So we're gonna be making some Mother's Day cards to go with these shadow box gifts right here that are being put together. Um, one is actually already put together. This is in a previous video that I just released, so I will link that for you up in the top left or top right corner. This was super fun. Now these do take a while to make, and my husband was so funny because he said oh, you should make a whole bunch of those and sell those. And I really looked at him and said, do you realize how long it took me to make it? It really doesn't take too long, but I think if you were if you were a business and you were making these, you definitely would want to do smaller ones or bigger flowers because I did a variety of sizes and it, it took a while, but this is for a gift and it was you know, perfectly fine. The next Mother's Day gift, and I'm gonna have a video for this, is a layered, um, shadow box and I actually have it already cut out I do have to finish some weeding so the Mother's Day cards that we're gonna make here with the um, Spellbinder 6 which I'm about to unbox and use for the very first time um, this is so gorgeous there are a lot of amazing creators online that I've seen use this die so I went ahead and got it and it was just the perfect time to go ahead and um, use my new machine so some of the other supplies that I am using, I already have some, I already have two card bases ready to go, and this is just 110 pound cardstock. It is scored, so this is um, eight and a half, or this is yeah, eight and a half by um, five and a half, and I just scored it down the middle to make a landscape card. I've already run it through my Cricut and had. Um, Cricut write all of my uh, information on the back. So I have two of those. I have two different cards going on. So I've already cut the card st cardstock strips for each particular design, and I'll talk more about those in a little bit. Um, I've got some scissors in case we need them. These are Simon Says Stamp Fine Detail Scissors. I actually really like those. I have a glue runner. I have some washi tape. I have some liquid glue that will definitely be needed for our die cut. Um, I have more oh, I have white card stock here. Now this is for the actual um, die itself and the card panel. And then this is new. It is a micro dot sheet and this um, this is for stacking the dies on top of each other after they're cut out, and it it is it is a game changer. I'm really excited to try this out. I've seen it done, and wow, somebody definitely deserved a gold star for creating this. Um, and then one of the things I wanted to talk about is cardstock. Now, the cardstock I used for the flowers in the shadow box. Um, was just recollections. You know, it's a pretty decent card stock. You can get it at Michael's. And it's okay. There's nothing wrong with this card stock. I use it all the time. I have quite a bit of it. And Concord and Nine came out with um, some new colors for 2024, and they have a sample pack. And I ordered it. You get 12 sheets, two of each of the six colors. So there's creamsicle, watermelon, wild berry, grasshopper, eucalyptus, and rainforest. And I chose to use all, well, five of these. I didn't use grasshopper for the um, layered horse design. 
and then I am going to partner the card that I'm making is going to go with it. So I chose the same strips. Y'all, this cardstock is phenomenal. Like this is the kind of cardstock that you hoard when you have leftover pieces. So um, it is, I opened it up and took a page out and I, I literally ran to the other room and told my husband, I'm like, you have to feel this paper. You have to. And he just laughed at me like I was, you know, crazy. But this cardstock is amazing. Um, I'm hoping that they come out with more of these little sample packs because I would love to try um, more of their cardstock colors without having to buy a, a huge bundle of them. But anyway, I just wanted to sh pass that on because, quite frankly, um, I'm not one to buy cardstock online. I just run down to Michaels or Walmart. And um, there is, I mean, there is a noticeable difference in um, the sturdiness. So I guess I, I would call it sturdiness. But again, I have lots of the other cardstock, and I just love it all. I love the color and the cardstock. So I just wanted to share that if you are looking to get some premium cardstock, try Concord and Knife. This is really nice. Well, let's stop um, jibber jabbering and get to opening the star of the show today. A while back, I ordered the Spellbinders Platinum 6. Now, I got it from scrapbooking.com. Um, they had a really good deal, and I think I even had a discount code being a new customer. But um, I wanted to try it out because normally I make all of my die cuts on my Cricut. But there are so many wonderful dies and there's embossing folders. Now that is one thing that I cannot run through my Cricut. So I went ahead and purchased it just so that I would have more options in my crafting. And that's kind of not normally like me. I usually tend to make do with what I have and I try to be very mindful about what I buy. Let's go ahead and open this. Um, it is a die cutting and embossing machine. It has a universal plate system, so it comes with all of this here. Um, this particular package, you get an embossing folder and you get uh, a die set. And this is thank you, and it's got a couple little hearts. So let's go ahead and open this up. And get this little beauty going. Okay, so we have a um, package here. Wow, that is very loud. I am so sorry. Okay, so in the package that you get, this is the thank you die and little flowers. So super cute. Um, you get a warranty reminder and registration paper. So that good to have. All right. This is a shim, not a cutting surface. This is a um, flexible mat. So this is probably like if you want to use a die to emboss instead of cut, um, I'm assuming. I guess I shouldn't assume since I've never used this before. This is an adapter plate, not a cutting surface. And they're all lettered, as you can see. Um, we have two cutting plates. Okay, so your cardstock and your die will go in between these. All right. They're both labeled as C. And then we have a platform top. And this is really nice. It tells you how to make your die cutting sandwich. And then it looks like the adapter plate I mentioned and the little um, the flexible mat that's for embossing. This is nice. I like the visual. Um, I like this. I like the visual reminder so you don't have to constantly pull out your um, instruction manual because I kind of like to put those away. 
So we got the die cutting sandwich, the embossing sandwich. This is the platform base. That's pretty thick. That's pretty awesome. And then let me, okay, that's a little better. It's like all of a sudden the sun came out and I had to change the lighting. Sorry. So then here's an embossing folder sandwich. There's apparently a couple of different things to do for that. So you get all this universal cutting system. That is very nice. I guess you can purchase it separately if you have a different machine. And then of course it comes with a little manual instructions, how to put it, the handle on. Okay, so let's move that out of the way, see what's else in here. Okay, so this is the embossing folder, and when you, oh, so it's a plastic bifold, and we, it, you can feel it, it's just, so this side is convex, it, it bubbles up basically, and this side is concave, so all of these dip down in, and so I'm guessing, depending on how you place your paper and what side you want to use, you could there are so many possibilities. I think I could get obsessed with embossing folders. All right, then, see, it looks like it's packaged really, really well. Let's see. And I am sensing a machine here that's going to need to be decorated, so that will be that will be fun. Okay. So here is the machine. It has a handle. I mean, it's it's kind of like a little toaster size, and you know, it's probably a little heavier than. A bag of sugar, maybe. It, well, I don't know. Sugar's gotten smaller lately, so maybe it's more like a bag of flour. But here's a handle, and then we have a die cutting tool, tool in one. So it, apparently, this helps you get all of your little pieces out if you just kind of run it over there. That is nice. Oh, look. I did not know that. I did not know we were getting little. Um, Piercing tips. Oh, that is so wonderful. Okay, I am officially mega impressed. So this side here is where we're going to put the handle. So you get, looks like a little screw and a washer and a stopper to cover the hole. You get a handle and you get an Allen wrench to make all of that happen. Now remember, for all you girls who are like me and worked in the wood shop with your grandpa and then your dad, lefty loosey, righty tighty. So we're gonna stick that on there. All right, that is secure on there. And then this is probably something I would keep, you know, handy in your craft tools, just in case you ever need it. Um, and then that goes there. Voila, ready to go. Okay, and then these are the sides, and they come down like this. And then your plate system goes here on the platform and you just turn the handle. Okay, so let's get our die ready to cut. And we're going to cut some of those mother's, uh, those mom floral deals so we can get our card put together. Okay, so before we actually go, I just wanted to show you this little tool here. Um, this part is where you can literally just run it over the die and get everything out kind of all at once and then the other side has these piercing um, 
wands and there is a curved gooseneck kind of one and then this is a straight one and if you pull this if you pull this down this pops out so you can interchange it and put it back in so yeah that's pretty cool and then this says unscrew so I'm not sure oh hey check it out that's where those go okay again super impressed because now I don't have to worry about where I'm gonna put those things they're gonna go down in there when they're when it's not in use okay somebody at Spellbinders is seriously thinking I they are a person after my own heart so wonderful love that tool in one it's called tool in one and it what's funny is I just bought a piercing um, little pokey piercing thing from Simon Says Stamp here because I had a gift card. So I'll have more than one. All right. Okay, let's get this card cut out. Another thing is that there are stopper feet on the bottom, just so you know. And it just, you know, it'll sit here on my glass mat and it won't move so that's really nice I like that okay so the platform base and then the platform top and then we're gonna have a cutting plate so you can still see through the cutting you can see through the cutting plate that you you know what you need and let's see I am going to place a cardstock and then this really gorgeous die. Now the die is smooth on one side and it is it has the ridges on the other and that's the side you want on the paper because you want the ridges to cut into the paper. And Maybe I should move this a little bit more over this way so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just going to use a piece of washi tape so that if for some reason I bump it, that the die and the cardstock stay together. Okay, so cutting plate, cardstock, die, more cutting plate. So we got all that. And then that just goes on top of the platform. And all right, we're going to stick that in here just like this. And we just give it a nice little go. And this is such an intricate die. I probably, I don't know if you can see. This side, the side that went in first, did pretty good. I think I'm going to run it another time or two just because it is so intricate. And I want to make sure that it does a really good job. Okay. And then I think I'm going to run it through. So I'll run it through one more time like this. And then I'm going to run it through um, where I just kind of flip it over. I'm going to do it like that one more time and see how it goes. And hopefully I did not mess it up by moving it around. Okay, so we have mom and then we're just going to pick this up. Okay, so you can see how by me picking everything up and kind of looking at it, um, that it kind of gets off. So, lesson learned when you are doing die cutting, don't, um, don't pick things up. 
this, put it right back in there. Okay, so let's get let's get this reassembled and we'll just do it again. I have a whole stack of cardstock because it is just paper. And now this M looks all right. And this O looks good. And this M looks all right. And I can use those for another card. So I think I am going to keep those. Okay, so I've got everything reassembled. And I am going to run this through two times before I take a look and see. And try not to mess it up this time. All right, I think that is definitely better. Much, much, much better. Okay. So I'm just going to pull that off of there. And I got all these little moms. The thing about a die is on the back, all these little tiny little preparations like this, this is for you can literally poke through and um, get things out of your die if you need to. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Yeah. All right. And then I will I'll just have to take, you know, this little tool and just go like this all the way through the die and get all of the little pieces out. Okay. All right, so I'm going to run this through. I I'm going to need a few of these for each card. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera and then we're gonna come back and start putting everything together. Well, I have all three of my moms cut out and my mom, um, my big letters there. And I'm gonna try out the embossing folder. And I have an idea for that. So in order to have it work most effectively, you need to open up the fibers of your card. So I am just, taking a baby wipe and I'm just gonna rub it over the front of my card I mean my cardstock and I'm gonna place that in here okay all right so this is the embossing folder now for the embossing you have this information over here so we have platform base and then you can use the platform top, the folder, and one of the clear cutting plates, or you can do the platform base, the embossing folder, and then this adapter plate here. So I'm going to give that a try. We're going to stick that in there. And I'm just going to go pretty slow because I really want that um, folder to have a good impression down into the paper. And that's also another reason why we use the baby wipe to just kind of ever so slightly dampen that. Okay. Take that off. And oh my goodness, look how beautiful that is. Okay, I seriously can see myself becoming obsessed with embossing folders. Okay, I don't need to run that through again. That is perfect. This is so cool. Okay, that right there is beyond impressive. Okay, so I wanted to show you <clears throat> if you have like a mouse pad or maybe a rubber, a rubber pad, something. That really makes poking these little things out super, super simple. Um, and you can, cause you can just kind of poke down. It kind of gives it some place to land other than your finger. And these just pop right out. So look how pretty that is. That is just, do you see why I, I had to have this die? Okay, so let's get this card put together. It actually goes pretty fast from here. All right, so a couple of things are going to happen. I am going to 
this is going to be placed on the panel here and I'm going to have these strips right here in on the inside and they're going to go this way I need to decide kind of how I want them to go and it's going to go like this and I think really and truly the best way will be to get the first one down and after the first one is down then they, the rest will be really easy So then what we're going to do is we're going to place the mom like this and we will end up having to trim this down just a little bit but look how pretty that is that is really nice and then I will need to bring in this guy here okay all right I think that's great all right, so I am going to cut off, and I'll probably save the bigger ones, but definitely not these tiny little ones. Just move those out of the way. Okay, so here we go. Now, we have to adhere these together so that we have some dimension. And I need three of those. Well, I've seen a lot of creators use this. This is these dot sheets. And so this looks like parchment paper on this side. And this is like a shiny wax paper looking on this side. And when you open it, this is sticky with super tiny micro dots. Um, I don't want to open it all the way. Okay. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to stack these, but instead of using liquid glue and going around all of the little pieces, I'm just going to put this on here like this. And I'm going to grab a scraper. I'm just going to burnish it down to pick up those little micro dots. And then when we pick it up, it is sticky. So that is super fun. Now, hopefully, I can do this without too much fuss. I'll start in the corner, I think. And I'm just going to work my way around and line all these pieces up and smush as I go. I don't really want to smush it down prematurely. And you could use liquid glue. You could, use, you could even use spray adhesive. And originally, I was going to just use liquid glue, but the more I thought about it, um, I thought that this would be much quicker. Okay. All right. So there's one, there's two layers together. And now we will do our third layer. All right. Now I need one I need one more.
It's so fun to peel this up. <laughs> I'm going to work on getting this centered over my And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it down. I'm going to bring in my big paper trimmer. Okay. So then we're going to, I'm just going to trim this down. Oh, much better. This looks great. Now I am going to use liquid glue for the O's. And let me grab my tweezers. So when I do stuff like this, I'm going to place the O here, the inner O there where I need it to go. And then I will build the other two on top of that. I really should have my reverse tweezers out. I'm not sure where they are. In fact, let me find this. Okay, much better. Reverse tweezers are amazing. So if you do not have a pair, um, I would encourage you to get one. In fact, I am thinking about buying a few more pair because I have one and I always seem to, you know, be looking for it. Okay, so looks good right there. And then I'm just going, now that I have that down, I'm going to put the other two directly on top of that. And I really like this dimension. Another thing you could do is not, you could just do glue along the mom and leave the card, um, that mean the flowers up, so that you can build them up off of the card and um, fluff them up and give it, you know, a little more. Um, different kind of elements. That is our card panel on the okay, front. Let's get this down on to our card base. So like I said, I've already used my Cricut to draw my little signature on the back. I'm going to grab some of those. Okay. Another thing I noticed is that when I scored my card, I didn't get it quite lined up. So that's an easy fix. We just refold it and press it down. Okay. Um, let me, I really should have out my Misty for this, but that's okay. We got this. We'll just that there and this is going to go on top right there tiny little spot right here I'm going to put a couple of sequins and then maybe one or two somewhere else just so it's a little more cohesive all right now this card already has quite a bit of dimension so I'm not going to use foam tape I'm just going to use some more tape runner. You could certainly put it up on foam tape. Absolutely. Perfect. We have some iridescent sequins and this is the um, this is a a uh, jewel picker tool. I got this from Simon Says Stamp. Thought I'd give it a try. And I'm literally just going to find a couple of, and I want, you know, kind of a larger one. But I'm just going to stick that, we're going to put one there. And maybe a super tiny one right next to it. There we go. Okay, 
And then I'm thinking I just might add, you know, like right here on this flower, maybe one here. Um, yeah, the medium size, I think the medium size is going to be perfect. I really like this iridescent confetti seeker, iridescent sequence. It does not distract from your cards, but it adds an element. Okay, so we are done with this card right here. I think that is so pretty. Okay, this die was definitely a great investment. I can see myself using this so many different ways. Oh, I love it. Okay, well, let's go ahead and put together one more card. I think I'm just going to do a quick little ink blend and then pop the mom on top and call it good. I actually have changed my mind again. I know, shocking. But what I want to do is I am going to, I, I'm just having so much fun with this, um, um, you know what? There's a little light right there. I don't know if that's any better or not. Okay, so I've changed my mind again, and that's the one thing I really love about crafting. And what I decided to do is I'm still going to use the mom, and I have my card panel, and I'm still using the embossed portion. But what I decided is instead of ink blending, I thought I would try out those tiny little flower dies that came with the Spellbinder 6 and just have a white on white card, but then have a little bit of, a little pop of color from the flowers. So here is my second card panel. I'm going to put that down here in my Misty just to hold it into place. Um, actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put this down and hold that into place. And what we're going to do is we are going to build up these moms. So I need three, three M's here, and I need three M's here, and I need three O's. And this will go, I mean, you know, this is going to go fast because these letters are big. And so it'll be easy to put these together and build that dimension. my three layers of mom. Okay, I have to laugh. My daughter, who is 12, she she came up to me one time and she said, Mom, do you know what mom stands for? And I was like, mm, Mama, Mom, Mother. She goes, Oh no. She goes, That is not what it stands for. She said, It stands for Mead of money. Of course, I think I laughed for five minutes because, yeah, this mom is not made of money, but I thought that was so cute. I absolutely love that, that little story. And then uh, one time she wasn't too happy with me and, you know, to kind of diffuse the situation, it was funny because I was like, hey, um, guess what mom stands for? And of course, she was not real happy with me right at that moment. So I kind of got the teenager stare. Well, she's 12, but still. I got the teenager stare at 12. And I said, make others mad. And of course, she burst out laughing. So it's just so funny. I love that story. So every time I see the word mom, I chuckle because I just think of made of money. And I'm like, yeah, I wish I was made of money.
Okay, so this is a little bit under, um, it's a little bit under five. So I just want to, I want to put it in the middle. Now I could choose to pop this up on on um, foam dots, but I think I'm not going to do that. There's already a lot of dimension going on in this card. And um, also, the more dimension you have, the, um, the more that you have to pay to mail it. So, all right. I'm just going to put this here as a placement guide. This is so fun. This is so fun to touch. It's like, it's like, I don't know. It's like a quilted piece of paper. It is really so cool. Um, I definitely think I'm going to have to invest in some more embossing folders. But I'm going to have to wait till I am made of money. Okay. We'll place the last one. So I'm going to let this hang for a minute or two. And while that's happening, over here, I am taking a page out of Laura Basson's book. And I am literally going to... Um, build up some dimension with these little elements. So I think what I'm going to do is put a little bit of glue down and then take this little jewel picker and I think I'm going to offset it. Sorry, I guess you really can't see what I'm doing. I probably should zoom in for you. Okay, so there's one. And I think I'm just going to get a couple of these pieces. I have a little triple layer of our pink flower. And so that's really what I'm going to do. And I'm thinking things like, you know, put a flower in that spot there and then put the leaves around it. And then maybe one down there and then a couple all over. So that's really my plan. With the embossing, now that I'm learning something, we are going to have to use foam dots to really make sure that these flowers stay where we want them. I'm going to grab my little foam dots and then we'll pop these down. There we go. That's definitely better. What I want to do is I want to place some leaves over here like that. Do we want one right there? Or maybe, maybe one right here. There we go. And then I can't help it, but we are going to need some of these super tiny iridescent sequins for the middle of our flowers. Like that. Oh, that looks so cute. Okay, let's get the rest, the little bit of rest on here that we're going to use. All right, where? Maybe we'll put it right here. And then we'll throw some leaves on that one, like that. And we'll put one over here. And then To, nope, that's perfect. We'll put um, a sequence here. Okay, so the big question is, do we need anything else? 
because I do not have any more leaves. I have glue, but no leaves. And I think, I don't know. I'm just not sure. Maybe I'll put that one over there with some of these little green dots around it. That one is on top of one of those little bubbles, so I don't think that I need a pop dot for that one. Okay, I think I'm going to do one more little um, embellished uh, sequence, the iridescent sequence. And then we'll put, get this on our card panel. I mean, we'll get this panel onto our card base. Okay, I am now going to put the card base into my Misty. And we're going to get this um, on. And, you know, I'm looking at this and thinking that, like, whether it's, I don't know, maybe I should use little pop dots because these are convex or concave little sections. So I think maybe that's what we need to do is kind of around the card in strategic places. We'll put some pop dots. Because otherwise, I don't really know how I'm going to glue that down. Okay, so I'm just getting the last of the sticky off of these pop dots. You know, if you're, um, if you're a mom, what, let me know down in the comments, like what would you really like for Mother's Day? Would it be a gift? Would it be a service? Would it be a day of sleep with no responsibilities? Let me know your ideal Mother's Day present that you would like. And also let me know what you plan on doing or giving to your mom. And, you know, that would be great. Like all of us generating ideas. Okay, so we have our card panel, and I use the pop dots simply because those are little concave pockets, and I don't know, I didn't want to do glue along those little edges. And so I'm just going to stick that down in here, and I want to get it as centered as possible. And I think I'm going to have to fix one of my little sequins. But other than that, I think, I think this card is finished. And we'll have to let that dry before we put it in an envelope. But, okay, so let's take a look. That, I think that looks sweet. I don't know, does it look blurry to you? I hope not. Okay, so this is card number two. I like twofers. You know, you make a card, and then you have leftover pieces, and you can make a second card. So I just think that that, I just love that. I'm, you know, I wish I had trimmed these just a little bit smaller, but you know, it doesn't matter. I think moms are just looking to be, told that they're appreciated and so handmade appreciation you can get away with a lot more but okay so we have this is going to be the next video coming up and it will be the gift that goes with this particular Mother's Day card and then we have this one here, this is a um, video already, well, it's going up on the channel shortly, and it will be going with this card. So I think those are two super sweet um, gifts. So I hope this video was inspiring and informative for you. Hopefully it was. If you'll go ahead and hit that like button, that would really help the channel grow and 
be part of the crafting community. If you haven't already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber so that you don't miss out on some great content coming up, especially once school is out and summer is upon us. It will be great to have more content coming out. Okay, so I will see you in the next video when we put this particular gift together. So in the meantime, grab yourself an amazing cup of coffee and happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.